<laughs> All right then, so in this video, we've, uh, I'm going to make it a little bit different. Rather than doing it as we go, I'm just going to explain what I've done. So I think it might be a little bit boring to go through uh, you know, setting up nodes. I'll just explain them instead. Let me know if, in the comments if you prefer me to uh, you know, do it as we go. But uh, just for this one, let's give it a try. And we started off, basically, I've created a, a cube and I've stretched it out. And then I've separated the cube. So we've got the sides, the back, the bottom, and also the front, which is hidden. But we've got the front over here. Once I've done that, for the sides, I wanted to add some spikes to it. And basically, we've added a geometry node system. And we've brought in the original geometry. We've distributed points all over the uh, geometry. And we use those points to distribute spikes onto that we've created with a simple cone and then given it a material and set it to shade smooth. We then want to orientate the spikes to the wall. And because we've created uh, points, we've no longer got the normals on there. So one option we can do, we can either plug this normal output into here, or we can use a capture attribute. So I've gone with the capture attribute method. And basically I've captured the normal from the original geometry and then passed it into an align euler to vector and just set it up so that the spikes will align to that normal of the original geometry. And then finally, I've just had a bit of randomness to the Z scale so that the spikes aren't all the same length. After that, after they've been instanced to the, each of those points, what I need to do then is realize the geometry so that rather than these just being instances, which is basically just a point in space, it's real geometry that the physics system can recognize and uh, collide with. And then finally, I've combined the two geometries, the original geometry and the spikes, and then that's those spikes finished. For the wall material, I've then just created a really simple uh, shader, which is basically a noise texture controlling the mixture between blood and a mud scrape texture, and that's also controlling the metallic and the roughness. And the floor is much the same thing. This time, it's just a musgrave texture controlling the roughness, just to give it a little bit of uh, detail. The next thing I added was Suzanne, and just gave her a very basic material with a bit of subsurface scattering. The important thing for Suzanne is that she's got some cloth simulation on her, and also collision, so that the, uh, the bum that arrives at the end there can collide with it as well. So for the cloth simulation, it was trial and error, and basically, I arrived at, at these sort of figures. But it, all, it always depends on the number of vertices you've got in the object. The more vertices, then the heavier it is. Um, and you may need to either reduce the vertex mass or uh, change the settings. But I arrived at these sort of settings to get the look I was after, if you want to uh, try these or try your own. One thing that I did also add was some very mild internal springs, which just allow Suzanne to keep a little bit of shape so that she doesn't completely collapse in on herself. Uh, and then we've also got object collisions and self collisions so that she doesn't sort of um, intersect with herself. She'll always collide with other parts of her own geometry rather than passing through. For the collision, this is how the other objects are going to collide with Suzanne. Uh, I think I left these at default. Maybe added a little bit of friction. To make sure Suzanne can interact with the rest of the scene, I've added a collision property to the floor, uh, the back of the chamber, the sides of the chamber, and also that hidden front as well, just so that she couldn't sort of fall out into the scene. So the next thing we've got is the bum that arrives at the end there. And basically, the bum is a very high-resolution mesh that I sculpted uh, previously, and I've remeshed it. But it's still very high-resolution, um, too high res for a cloth simulation. The, well, for a cloth simulation that will simulate quickly. So what I've done instead is use a low-resolution version, if we look at this one. And I've simulated this one instead. And then on the high-res mesh, I've used a surface deform modifier to make sure that that high resolution one will inherit all the deformations from the low resolution one. So if we play this back, you can see that's really quick. 
And what I also did, which I decided not to keep in the final one, if we look down here, I've created a couple of shape keys on this low res one. And the, basically the shape keys expand the torso. So if we click on this one, you can see it just gets a little bit bigger. And that was to emulate the laughter, um, which was controlled by a modifier in the graph editor, just a noise modifier, which was restricted to a certain point. So it started at the same time as the laughter. But I decided not to use that in the end. Uh, we've also got the settings for the bum. Let's have a quick look at those uh, on the calculate calculate one. I've turned the quality up a little bit just to get rid of any sort of um, shaky behavior. And then I've tweak the settings, uh, trial and error, just until I got something that looked pretty good. Turned on internal spring so it doesn't lose all of its um, all of its volume. Basically, an internal spring is like a um, a line that connects between two different points inside of the geometry, and and they they restrict the amount of movement that can happen on that surface. And then finally, we just turned on self collisions and uh, object collisions are left at default. And just to make sure that the bum was nice and smooth, um, <laughs> what, what I've also done is made sure that the one that's been simulated has got a subdivision uh, and also a smooth on it. Otherwise, it, get, it got a little bit too lumpy, and uh, it, was, it was quite obvious in the uh, high-res mesh. What I've also done is animate the visibility of that bump. So you can see over here, we've got little green icons on there. And uh, basically that means that when Suzanne goes past initially, it's not there. And then once it's outside of the camera's view, it will pop into, uh, its visibility will come back on and it will appear in the renders, and then it will drop down. I also needed to make sure that I turned off the collision. So I've animated that on the side chambers so that as soon as Suzanne's on the floor and she doesn't need to interact with those spikes anymore, I've animated it off just until the bum gets down to the floor and then I've turned it back on again so that it can start interacting with the spikes itself. And then I added a reflection plane so that we've got realistic reflections on the ground. There you go, so it's better than the built-in ones. I've also turned those on as well though, so we've got the ambient occlusion turned on, just to give us some shadows. And we've turned on screen space reflections for the walls. So you can see we've got the reflection in there. And we've also turned on a little bit of motion blur, I've turned it down a little bit though, because it was quite a fast moving scene. And that will just add a little bit of, uh, just make it a bit, a bit more pleasant on the eye during the animation. Oh, and then to animate the camera, I just did that by hand. So basically, I moved the camera to follow Suzanne as she went down. So I'll let it play, and then I'll turn on record here in the, in the um, timeline. I'll just move the camera to where I want. I'll let it play a bit more, and then I'll move the camera again. And then I'll just tidy that up in the graph editor afterwards, and just add a little bit of depth of field as well. And I've also animated the depth of field, obviously, because the camera distance from Suzanne will change as it goes down uh, and when it zooms in at the end there. And I also recorded the audio inside of OBS using this free VST plugin, uh, which basically changes your voice. So you can either be really high pitched or really low pitched. And then I've, the resulting file I brought into Blender's uh, video editor uh, the video sequence editor and just align those up with the movement and the trump at the end that was purely accidental um i wasn't expecting it but basically what happened was when the bum got down to the bottom there there was an unexpected jerk right at the end <laughs> there i wasn't expecting it it, it wasn't planned for uh, but when i saw the jerk i thought well it's got to be done so I'll put that in there as well. If you want the scene file, by the way, you can get it from the website. It's in the members area. Uh, you can join up. It's uh, really cheap, and it will just help support the channel. And also, you'll get access to uh, all of the YouTube scene files, plus some of the paid stuff for free as well. Uh, so you do get quite a lot for your money.
and uh, yeah, it'll help me to keep making videos. So hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.